Hey guys, Delman here with another Aegis ship video for you. So we're going to continue the Aegis lineup until we run out of ships, and then we're going to move on to Anvil. So let's continue here. So in this lineup today, we'll be taking a look at the awesome Vanguard series. So let's dive right in and get as much info here as we can. Let's go. The A3G Vanguard is the United Empire of Earth's dedicated deep space fighter initially developed as a bomber destroyer. The Vanguard is a hard-charging bulldog of a ship, which features extensive forward-mounted weaponry designed to tear through the shields and armor of other spacecraft. Four high-caliber forward laser cannons and a massive central Gatling gun give the Vanguard an unprecedented amount of sheer striking power. So named because of their multiple jump range allows them to form the forefront of any military expedition. Vanguards have seen extensive service against the Vanduul. The Vanguard trades the maneuverability of the Hornet and the speed of a Gladius for the extended range, armor, and durability. With more hardpoints and increased space for onboard computer systems, the design can boast improved radar and credible electronic warfare suite. In combat, the Vanguard's roles are extensive. Long range jump scout, extended duration patrol reconnaissance ship, fighter bomber, when equipped with torpedoes of course, tactical command and control ship, bomber interceptor and, in the proper hands, even a fighter killer. The Vanguard's extensive range can allow for missions lasting days or even weeks. Initially, the ship is fitted with sleeping berths and a reclamation facilities to support such mission. With a notable silhouette, the Vanguard is best known for its distinctive twin x forge engines, which allow for both an impressive top speed and an extensive backup system for enhanced combat survivability. Coupled with the superstructure composed from a distinct tungsten alloy, more than one Vanguard pilot has returned to base with little more than a single engine and a charred remain of a fuselage. Vanguard units have been assigned to both planetary bases and aboard larger space stations, the fighter's legendary durability allows it to operate in all weather conditions, with limited maintenance, and makes it particularly beloved by the hard-fighting UEE Marines, who make frequent use of its ability to comfortably operate from makeshift combat bases. Though Aegis Dynamics does not officially offer a civilian variant of the Vanguard, working in conjunction with the UEE's Frontier Protection Program, they have made a number of mil-spec Vanguards available to civilians. Strike Harden from a Distance The Vanguard, a recent design from Aegis, has quickly become Earth's premier deep space fighter. Deep space fighters are typically used to pursue engagements in outlying areas when support from a carrier is not available. Vanguards are usually flown by ground and station-based naval forces, and are widely used by militia squadrons, specifically designed to operate from planetary bases and engage targets up to a star system's distance. The fighter trades some maneuverability for extended supply of fuel and munitions, as well as basic survival accommodations for a pilot and a radar operator. Vanguard's RIO operates a turret, the ship's missile loadout optionally, and its highly advanced sensor suite. This distinct scanning array gives the Vanguard a particular advantage when fighting in and around obstacles such as asteroid fields or nebula. Finally, the Vanguard is known to be an extraordinary sturdy spacecraft, with multiple backup systems not commonly found in single-seat ships. Stories of Vanguards limping back to base with a single engine and half their fuselage exposed to the vacuum of space have become common, as the battle against the Vanduul has heated up. So, now let's take a look at the different variants of Vanguard and uh, see what each variant is specialized to do. So, let's jump right in. So let's take a look at the uh, the fighter variant of the Vanguard. So a hard charging bulldog of a fighter which features extensive forward mounted weaponry designed to tear through the shields and armor of other spacecraft. So yeah, this Vanguard is uh, the fighter variant is designed to basically get in there and do as much damage as possible. Um, a real hunter killer of a ship. So let's have a look at its stats and specifications. So we're going to start with hard points here. So, the Vanguard Warden. Radar medium, computer small, and one medium, so it has a small and a medium for computers, it's not bad. Two medium power plants, two medium coolers, two medium shield generators. It's a bit of a tank still, but 
you know, I do like this loadout. It's pretty good. Uh, it's got two medium fuel tanks, two medium uh, fuel intakes. It has a medium quantum drive, medium jump module, and a medium quantum fuel tank. Thrusters, it has two retro, six main, four gimbaled, and six fixed. So it's got plenty of maneuvering thrusters on it. It's, uh, it's no slouch, that's for damn sure. So, it has a size 5 weapon mount, which is pretty uh, pretty devastating, and it also has four size 2s. It has a uh, size 2 turret, which is pretty good, uh, with two weapons on it there. It has got on board uh, four size 4 uh, missile launchers, which is pretty handy. Um, I can imagine that will pack a uh, serious punch. So those are four size four racks, guys, um, which is which is really really good in my opinion for delivering a killer blow when it comes to missiles. I mean, you drop the shields on someone and you unload all of that. It doesn't matter what it is, either it's going to be critically damaged or it's going to be pretty dead. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty handy fighter. Most things you come up against are going to be medium and uh, small size crafts. Uh, I'd be more careful when tackling the large, and then uh, when fighting capital ships, definitely going to need to be in a fleet. So yeah, that, that covers the uh, hard points, let's move on to the specifications. Right, so its focus is heavy fighter. Uh, its length is 38 meters, its beam is 26.5 meters, its height is 9.5 meters, its size is medium, a mass of 238,616 kilograms, zero cargo capacity, SCM speed of 175, afterburn speed of 1,115, max crew of two and a minimum crew of two, obviously. Uh, maneuvering, 60.0 degrees is pitch max, yaw max is 60.0 degrees, roll max is 75.0 degrees, x-axis acceleration is 51.9, Y-axis acceleration is 54.5, Z-axis acceleration is 52.8. So, my personal opinion on this variant of the Vanguard is it's a very, very good fighter. It's very good at what it does. But it's, a, it's one of those ships which is a bit of a struggle to use when fighting uh, light fighters, I would say. Definitely really hard to hit something like a Gladius or something like this. Um, or any other light fighter. Medium fighters are not a problem, such as the Hornet and stuff. They're not really quick enough to get away uh, out of your reticule when you have them locked in. And if they do try to escape you through uh, boosting away, that's when you deploy the missiles. And um, if you have the right ones equipped, then they're pretty much toast. You know, I really do love this Vanguard. I would recommend using it in a squadron. Um, simply because of its range capabilities, you'll be able to deploy that squadron further um, further away from the point of origin than you would usually be able to. So yeah, I really do like this one. I'd have to give it a, uh, a 7 out of 10 for being a, uh, a heavy fighter in my opinion. Right, let's move on to the next ship. Right, so the Vanguard Harbringer, the uh, missile boat variant. Right, so let's have a look at what it says here. The Vanguard Harbinger is Earth's standalone fighter bomber, converting the standard Warden model's escape pod into a potent bombing bay. The extended range of the Vanguard and the relatively small profile mean that it can go where carrier-based planes or larger strategic bombers don't, and then strike hard and make it back to frontier bases. The Vanguard's Harbinger is a powerful bomber that can operate out of the roughest forward operating bases. So basically, you're going to be sacrificing your escape pods in this bad boy, which means that um, if you run into some serious trouble and there is no way out, it's fatal. So, let's continue to see uh, more about the ship. Let's have a look at its uh, hard points. So, medium radar, small computer, medium uh, computer on board, just like the... Uh, the standard Vanguard, it has two medium power plants, two coolers, medium, and two medium shield generators. It has got two medium fuel intakes, two medium fuel tanks, one medium quantum drive, one medium jump module, one medium quantum fuel tank. It has on board two retro, six main, four gimbaled, and six fixed thrusters. Weapons, it has a size five and four size twos turret size 2, well it has a missile turret on board actually, this one. Uh, missiles, now this is important folks. So when it comes to missiles, 
It, it can deliver a potent blow. It has a one size five rack on board, and it also has size four torpedoes on board. So these torpedoes are gonna pack a serious punch and are uh, quite devastating. But I'm looking forward to seeing um, how this ship is gonna fare in the verse. I think this is something that most large and capital ships need to be very aware of, and anything below should run for the hills. So let's look at its specifications. So it's got a length of 38 meters, uh, beam is 26.5, height 9.5, size medium, mass 240,000.92 kilograms. Pretty, uh, pretty heavy beast. The rest of the stats are currently unknown, other than it has a max and a minimum crew of two, and a zero cargo capacity. This is a dedicated bomber, guys. This is a really, really mean ship to come across in the verse. If you are the owner of one of these ships, then yeah, you're a very lucky guy. If uh, you intend to use it for its desired purpose, you're going to be doing a lot of damage. Now, the Harbringer, in my eyes, has always been a really, really, really sound option when it comes to uh, a bomber. I would definitely select this over the uh, the gladiator anytime because of its um, its long range capabilities as you know the gladiator is a carrier based bomber this one is more of a long range bomber it means you can have a base in the middle of nowhere and uh, launch from there to a mission critical area say there's some ships inbound towards your base or towards a strategic location you can get these things on the case pretty soon and uh, that is incredibly effective because of its size it can travel through um, various jump points that the larger ships cannot and um, like it said it can go to all sorts of places that would be otherwise unavailable so yeah definitely recommend the harbinger i'd give it for a bomber i'd give it a 9 out of 10. the one thing that i have to down market on is the fact that it doesn't have escape pods i find that very worrying but you know Fair enough, you know what I mean? It's It comes with the territory, I guess, but it's a really cool ship. Definitely a fun game experience if you have one of these guys. Right, so this is a really awesome variant of the Vanguard. It's personally my favorite. This is the Vanguard Sentinel. The Vanguard Sentinel is a ship that's designed uh, to fly smart instead of taking enemies head on. The conversion features an AR cockpit, an external E-War pod, decoy missiles, and a set of EMP charges. Vanguard Sentinels often provide necessary combat support for combined operations. A lone Sentinel, assigned Wild Weasel, task is frequently paired with Harbringer Bombers and Warden Escorts for large attack missions. So this works in conjunction with the other two I previously listed. It's a really, really, really unique ship. I, um, I love the idea of using the E-Warfare and stuff. That sounds so cool. You know, like, uh, going in under the radar and messing with the enemy's radar and capability to track stuff and then boom you hit him with an EMP and then oh man it's a really really cool gameplay dynamic I can't wait to see how it works in the verse so when it comes with specifications uh, we'll go over what it has on board a medium radar two medium computers two medium power plants two medium coolers two medium shield generators Two medium fuel intakes, two medium fuel tanks, quantum drive medium, jump module medium, quantum fuel tanks medium. It has weapons of one size five and four size twos. It has a size two turret for missiles. It's got on board a series of four size four racks, which is pretty handy. Thrusters, so two retro, six um, main, four gimbaled and uh, six fixed gimbaled thrusters. So that's that's pretty handy. I mean, it's, it's going to be as maneuverable as the others. Um, let's look at its specifications. So specifications are length 38 meters, beam 26.5, height 9.5, size medium, mass is 238,616 kilograms, maximum and a minimum crew of two and zero cargo capacity. Its main focus is interdiction. So this is a really good ship to pull out a pri high priority target out of um, out of quantum, or basically get it in a situation where it's more vulnerable than where uh, when it's like traveling. So between locations, you could use this to pull it out and uh, ambush the target during transport, which will ultimately eliminate the um, the chances of basically it being in a large battle group when it's at its destination or when it's about to leave. 
So yeah, it's a really handy ship, this. Um, I would definitely recommend that at least um, a good combat fleet has at least one of these in it. Um, if your focus is on combat, you're going to definitely need something like this. Very, very versatile ship. And uh, yeah, definitely is my favorite Vanguard out of all the variants because of its, um, its role is so unique. There's not many ships that have this kind of functionality in the game. So let's continue. So last but not least, in the pipe 5x5, five five, the Vanguard Hoplite, which is a dedicated dropship version of the Vanguard series. And I know it's a pretty unique uh, role yet again, but the Vanguard seem to fill every role that combat so needs quite quite well to be honest so let's continue here what it says the vanguard hoplite is a cross between the winning vanguard deep space fighter and the dedicated boarding ship adapting a reliable design for amphibious operations the hoplite is a perfect tool for inserting an armored strike team with enough firepower to get them out again so the vanguard hoplite eh right let's continue and uh have a look at its technical overview and its hard points and stuff. Let's do this. So, radar medium, computers, one small, one medium, power plants, two medium, coolers, two medium, shield generators, two medium, fuel intakes, two medium, fuel tank, two medium, quantum drives, medium, jump module, medium, quantum fuel tanks, medium. So, thrusters again, two retro, six main. It has four gimbaled maneuvering thrusters and six uh, fixed maneuvering thrusters. Weapons, one size five, four size twos, one size two turret, and it also has handy onboard two size four racks, which is pretty good. Um, specifications, we got a uh, length of 38 meters, 26.5 meters, height 9.5. And its size is medium, mass is 229,440 kilograms, zero cargo capacity, minimum crew of two, maximum crew of two, but that does not include passengers, people. SCM speed of 180, octoburner speed of 1,022, pitch max is 60 degrees, yaw max is 60 degrees, roll max 60.5. X-axis acceleration is 51.8, Y-axis acceleration 54.6, Z-axis is 53.4, which is pretty handy. Um, it can carry quite a few troops and is a very, very good uh, dropship in my opinion. And um, we, we use a, a few of these in our organization, the Death Corp Strike Unit, as our dedicated dropship platforms because they're very reliable and we have them in the game now. So we're going to to do a few practice runs with them. They're a lot of fun. So yeah, I highly recommend this ship to you guys if you want to be a, a dropship pilot or um, you're looking to add a dropship to your fleet. This is the kind of ship you're looking for. So yeah, I de definitely recommend it. It is, uh, yet again, all the vanguards are absolutely great, guys. Um, they really, really are a unique ship. They're, they're tanky. That's the one thing you have to remember, guys. If you want a ship which is not necessarily too big and it's sort of medium fighter kind of size to large fighter size, and you want it to be really, really sturdy, this, the Vanguard series, is the ship series for you. So that pretty much wraps up the Vanguard series of ships, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, the Vanguards are very cool, and I will continue to do the Aegis lineup. Sorry for no video yesterday, guys. I am, uh, I've got the flu right now, and I'm pretty much very, very under the weather. I've got a very, very sore throat, and it hurts to talk. But these videos are important, and I know I've got to put them out for you guys, so don't worry, no slack in here. So yeah, we're going to continue with one every other day, and I will be doing a special video for the discounted starter packs, so look out for that one. Alright, so you know the drill, Commanders. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.